Sometimes enough is enough. and Your personal happiness isn't always worth the paycheck. What's going on, everybody? Dylan Winspear here bringing you another quick rant about an experience that I had just this last week. I fired a client. Hadn't had to do that in years. Now, before I give you the deeds and share with you all that you can learn from the story, I wanted to quickly let you know of the sweet offerings that I've been putting together to help UX designers like yourself excel in their career. First, for those of you who are new to the industry, I've created a completely free course about getting your UX resume together. Uh, and it's got plenty of details and examples of how to do it successfully. If you're hoping to get a little bit more hands-on help, I've also listed an option for an hour-long coaching call. These calls have been amazing, and seriously, I'm having so much fun with them. I've even met a couple new friends doing them. You can find the free resume course in the hour-long coaching session by visiting designtoday.com slash courses. All right, so let's get into the story now. About three or four weeks back, I was approached by a potential client who's got an app that's been up and running for a couple years now, and they finally felt the need to improve their UX. Well, at least that's what I was thinking, or that's originally how I was pitched. After having our first call and going through some of the scope and budgeting and other techniques that I've learned from Chris Doe, I wasn't actually all too confident that they even wanted UX help as it was starting to sound a little bit more just about UI updates. In either sense, I shared the value that I could offer, I wrote them a proposal, and I waited a couple days to hear back. I learned that I was out of their budget and they decided that they wanted to go with another designer. No feelings hurt, I moved on. A few days later, they hit me up a little concerned with their other designer's ability, and after some back and forth, I agreed to consult on the project. One of the young partners really just wanted to collaborate and bounce ideas off each other. I was happy to help. I began the consulting gig the following week. We'd collaborate on certain problems that they were working through, and each call lasted a couple hours. I was honestly having a blast at this point. I was just having a lot of fun with being able to jump into the weeds of the problem and then not having to do any significant work after the calls. All the while, I was getting paid pretty good for just a few phone calls. This went on for two weeks. After each call, the young partner I mentioned earlier just loved the value he was getting out of these phone calls. And again, things were going great for us both at this point. But then he told me the UX designer that they had hired had finished his contract to complete the wireframes. We looked at them together, and I was astonished that they were calling things complete at this point. Wireframes. That's it. Gray boxes and about 11 screens, no real content that you would even use to fill in those gray boxes, nothing to give the next designer any sort of direction on where they were heading. I told them that at minimum, they were 10 hours away from just being able to finish these wireframes, let alone iterations on higher fidelity. With their enthusiasm for how things were running with me, they decided that it was best to have me bring on a designer who I could mentor through the project. Now, I was stoked on this because it meant that I got to hire a designer that I trusted to get the job done. Now, after putting out some feelers, I decided on an old student of mine from Lambda School, and we were off to the races. The first couple of meetings went just fine. Scope expanded a bit, but the client was excited by it, and both the designer and I had been brought on. We were getting paid hourly, so all good. Now we get to the pinnacle of the story, and thanks for bearing with me on the setup. All the good times ended in one single phone call. We had another wireframe review, and this was on some of the original scope and some of the updated scope but the meeting went off the rails. I should mention that one of the client's other partners, a more senior partner, joined in on this review. Now, he had been in a previous meeting already, but still didn't give me a good idea or a good pulse on how the project was going about in his mind. Apparently not good. It was one comment after the next after the next that he didn't approve of the direction that we were heading. He questioned every decision, even the decisions that we had made in weeks prior with his younger partner. That's when the light bulb hit and I realized that these partners didn't see eye to eye on where this project was heading. Design was getting pitted between two partners and we were taking the brunt of the blows being thrown from each other. It became so apparent that where the younger partner thought we needed to head, the older partner disagreed. The design looked stupid because we were unaware of their disagreements. Then a couple of comments were made that were pretty unprofessional. And at that point in the call, they were personal and they stung a bit. Now, if you know me at all, you know I wasn't going to sit back and just take it. So in as professional of a manner as possible, I told him that his comments stung a bit, and I reverted back to addressing a problem that he was seeing that I was unaware of. He muted himself the remainder of the meeting, and we ended on a super awkward note where everybody knew it was weird, but nobody knew what to do about it. 
I fumed for hours after that call, just digesting what had happened and how it could have come off the rails as quickly as it did. A few things began to make sense. I realized that design was the scapegoat of their internal disagreements. Now listen, I've been working my tail off recently trying to help our family achieve a couple of our financial goals, and I'm already seeing my family less and less because of those commitments. And on that day, I only got about an hour with my kids, and I was fuming. I realized that no paycheck was worth it right now. I don't need to be taking these personal shots on these Zoom calls. I was hourly, the power was on my side, and I was ready to walk away. Instead of responding while I was still emotional, I slept on it. It's really easy to say things that you don't mean in the heat of the moment. So I slept on it. The next day, things were a bit clearer for me. I understood my reasons. I calculated my cost and I was ready to move forward and calling it quits. I made the call that afternoon and started by just talking about the elephant in the room. The young partner was pretty unsure of how to move forward from the previous day's phone call. He mentioned to me, yeah, sometimes he says things that you just kind of have to roll with and you just gotta, gotta take it with a grain of salt. I responded saying, see, that's where you're wrong. I don't need to roll with it, and I don't need to take it at all. 15 minutes later, we were done. The truth is, I kind of feel bad for this younger business partner. He's gonna need to have to work things out with his senior partner, but that's not my place to get involved. I didn't like leaving him high and dry, so truth be told, the next day I took another 30-minute consulting call with him just to help him figure out how we could put a bow on the work that we had done. But after that, we were through. Somehow, I think we were able to salvage the relationship. And who knows, I might hear from them again in the future, but it will again be on my own terms. I share this long-winded stories because I want you to learn three things. First, constantly be mindful of your mental health. If you feel that it's slipping, no paycheck is worth it. Trust me, I know sometimes we just want that paycheck, but the next one will come around. Second, you have a skill set that is valuable you've practiced, you've put in the hours, you've put in the work, you're sharpening your skills. Don't let someone take that value from you. Third, and along with the previous point, never let a client talk you out of your price range or in a price rate that you're comfortable with. Sure, you can negotiate, but not to the point where you're second guessing. This is especially true for the younger freelancers who are already starting at lower rates. In my experience, it's the lowest paying clients that are always the noisemakers. That's it. Always be mindful of your mental health, remember your value, and don't let someone talk you out of your pay rate. If you've been listening the last couple of weeks, you know that I've been spending considerable amount of time uh, on this podcast talking about freelance. Since the pandemic hit, I know many of you have turned to means of sustaining yourself. Maybe you lost your job and now you're freelancing, or maybe you're freelancing just to keep the cushion soft. Let me encourage you to go back and listen to episode 81 with Michael Janda where we talk about how to price your projects. Additionally, there's future interviews and rants to help you in your freelance journey. To make sure you catch all of our future episodes, consider subscribing, uh, both to YouTube or on your, on your podcasting app. Follow designtoday.com on Instagram and connect with me on LinkedIn. If you know you've got questions or ideas that you want me to address, reach out, let me know. Hope to hear from you soon. I'll see you next time.